Hi, welcome to section 6, ClickView Services. Let's get started. First, we will understand the fundamentals of ClickView Server components, and then we'll look at each ClickView service in detail. In previous lessons, we have seen the logical architecture and various deployment options. From this lesson, we'll go through some advanced concepts where we will understand the role of each ClickView server service. Before we dive into various ClickView server service, let's review some essential concepts. If you already know these concepts, which is great, but I would recommend reviewing them to understand the full context of what we will be talking in future lessons. So the first concept we will be looking at is service-oriented architecture. So what is service-oriented architecture? To keep it simple, service-oriented architecture is a design pattern, and service-oriented architecture is essentially a collection of services running together. These services communicate with each other. Communication can involve either simple data passing, or it involves two or more services coordinating some activity. So what does this mean from ClickView perspective? So let's go deeper and let's understand what, what it means from ClickView perspective. So from ClickView perspective, all the services, QVS, QDS, DSC, QMS, which is ClickView Management Service, DSC stands for Directory Service Connector, and QDS stands for ClickView Distribution Service, and QVWS is ClickView Web Server, and QSS stands for ClickView Settings Service. So don't worry if you don't know any of these services, we'll go in more detail in coming lessons. For now, all you need to understand is that these services communicate with each other via QVP protocol and communication with browsers is via the HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Don't forget that the HTTPS is a secured and encrypted protocol. All ClickView server services communicate using a web service. So the web service is used to communicate between the services. This means the service can be deployed on different servers as long as the service can communicate via the assigned port. This allows, for instance, ClickView distribution service, which is responsible to connect the source and extract the data, and if QDS resides on separate server from the one on which QVS and ClickView web server services run, so basically if you have two nodes, one node where you have QDS running and then the other, the other node you will be running QVS and then ClickView web service. So if you have them on separate nodes, it's critical to separate the backend process, which is the QDS service relates to, from the front-end process where QVS and ClickView web server are used as part of the front-end process. So simple analogy is that we compare service-oriented architecture with musical orchestra, where each musician performs or plays their instruments according to the notes, and their timing is completely in sync, and their timing is completely in sync with other musicians in the group. Even though in reality musicians work in isolation, yet they are in harmony and produce great music. So it's pretty similar where the services do their job in isolation, yet they talk to each other. That's the beauty of it. And the web service calls are made to communicate between the services. So the main advantage of service-oriented architecture design pattern is that when one service goes down, other services can still perform their jobs. So for example, in our case, if QMS goes down, as an administrator, you can't access QMC, which is ClickView Management Console, because ClickView Management Service is used to run QMC. However, users can still access ClickView applications without any disruption. So I hope that makes sense, which is about the service-oriented architecture. In next lesson, we'll understand the difference between a service and process, and we'll look at few other concepts. Thank you for watching.